Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for the 13th of the month. Holy cow, we're already in the middle of the month on March 13th, 2023. Well, we certainly have some volatility here in the market with two banks failing creating all kinds of uncertainty out there in the market, really created some financial damage or technical damage um, in our charts. And obviously we've got another very big week ahead of us of uncertainty. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. Well, as I have mentioned over and over and over, uh, this price support area here in the chart was pretty darn important. And we had that potential if we broke that area to test this area of price support in the chart. And unfortunately, um, that kind of happened uh, just about all at once as we drop through and that worry, that contagion of banking failures really started to um, creep into the psyche of the market, uh, pushing us down. Now, I would have to say a, a rational thought process would be that we would get a pretty substantial bounce. If you haven't heard, um, right after the futures market opened last night, regulators jumped in with the statement saying they're going to backstop um, Silicon Valley Bank, the depositors there, um, for um, essentially um, bailing things out uh, for the depositors, which is a good thing. But at the same time, um, the markets are worried about um, how far has this contagion maybe spread and is this going to be enough to backstop the issues out there that we're seeing in the financial system? It's remarkable to see, um, as we're still trying to fight a major inflation situation, how fragile our financial system has become when we turn off the quantitative easing spigot um, for such a short period of time. And now we're already on the brink of uh, bank failures and issues out there and our economy also continuing to slow um, making some well the path forward pretty uncertain and obviously we could see some volatility a lot of emotion I think we could see some of those big big rip your face off type whipsaws and rallies in the market or failures and then big overnight reversals as we deal with all this uncertainty moving forward. So first off, um, let's take a look at our technicals here in the chart. Obviously, we're not looking so good here when we just look at the technicals of these price patterns, noticing that we have a all of our major moving averages over the Dow um, over the top here, and we are officially in a downtrend here now on the diamonds having made a lower high followed by a lower low breaking down through that 200 day moving average so we do need a rally back we are oversold in the short term but that really all depends on how this contagion may spread so watch that carefully and then if we take a look at our spy spy also breaking down here and i have been mentioning this lower high lower low lower high now lower low um, unfortunately, as we broke down, we broke down through that level of support on Friday. We're trying to bounce that up with this news um, that they're going to backstop um, depositors here um, of um, SV uh, Silicon Valley Bank. But you'll want to watch right in here. We could retest this support level in the chart and if that fails just kind of keep in mind we might push down into here if we can rally back i would look for a rally back up into these areas of the chart um, we'll want to watch carefully for these areas of price resistance if we can break through there then i think a rally back up maybe to test this downtrend again could be in play but 
we'll have to respect that pretty carefully and closely if we run into that and show failure. Again, technically here, well, things really reversed here a lot on us. We still have the 50 day above the 200 day moving average, which is a good sign, you know, that, that golden cross in here. And I know there's still a lot of hope that um, we're just gonna zoom right back to market highs. But I think in light of the new data, we're starting to um, lose some of that um, um, wild speculation type thing. We, we broke this um, upside, longer term upside trend. We are moving in a downtrend. And um, if we rally back up, watch these technical resistance levels here in the chart on those moving averages as well as the price action levels here to be paid attention to. If we take a look at our QQQ, well QQQ held up the strongest and you can see overnight we had this big huge move happening here in QQQ as we learn about more bailouts and things like that from the government. But um, as you can look right in here we've got this good hold of price support so if we can continue to hold that NASDAQ is trying to hold up better than others and we are seeing quite an improvement in the bond market here as everyone is running to safety to bonds but that certainly doesn't help the situation here in um, the NASDAQ, uh, particularly as we are entering the blackout period for company buybacks. We're entering that period and then we've got to face another quarter of earnings coming up that are likely not to going to be as stellar. So watch that closely and we have this downtrend here to deal with. So if we can push back up here and test this resistance, that's great. But just keep in mind that downtrend doesn't fix anything if we can't break through and hold it as support. So watch that closely. Technical here in the chart, probably the best situation here um, of the indexes. And that is we've got that 50 trying to cross up through the 200 here, providing us a nice little support level in the technicals right in here. But at the same time, our shorter term average is crossing down, providing that little bit of resistance area in here. So the question will become, will we hold here or will those shorter terms maybe push us down through those levels as we learn more about the banking situation? So watch that carefully. Our IWM, technically speaking, Pretty ugly situation here as we broke down substantially below our 200 day moving average. As you guys remember, I was talking about the possibility that we could test this support level um, in um, IWM on Friday and that's kind of where we stopped. Now, considering the fact that we're kind of slipping out from under this kind of a flat upside trend, um, we've got some challenges here to, to deal with. If we were to break this price support, then I think we go down into here. If we can get a rally back up in the chart, well, I would look for some resistance to occur right in here. Look at all this price resistance in the chart to occur unless we get a, a Fed just that completely flips and says, okay, we're back to quantitative easing. Um, I don't see us just taking right back off and rallying straight back up there, but if we do, um, then we have this downtrend yet to contend with in the chart. So a lot of changes here really fast on the technicals of our index charts. If we take a look at our VIX, well, VIX had been pretty, um, well, pretty complacent. And obviously the last couple of days of the market changed that quite a bit. We shot up here in fear substantially, which means anyone that trades options, your option prices are considerably higher today um, as a result with that implied volatility. So any, any um, pullback that holds this uh, support area in the chart, we run the risk then that we start increasing in fear here in the market. If those bulls can engage and support and if we can get enough Fed action in here to support everything, then maybe we push that fear back down but we'll want to be careful just because I don't think we're out of the woods here yet on this financial situation. Um, and also considering the, the major economic reports we have coming this week, I think 
anything is possible. If we take a look at our T2122, this gives us one of our best hopes of a bounce or a relief rally of some kind. And as you can see in here, T2122, we made her down here into the full on bullish reversal zone. I think the question becomes, if this contagion spreads, if we start to see more banking issues out there, we could continue to sink in this market on that fear. But I would suggest that um, our, our path of least resistance right now would be some kind of a relief rally. The question is how big would that relief rally be with this uncertainty in the market and how many folks will just be running for some safety to protect their capital due to the wild volatility that we could experience. So watch that closely. And then if we take a look at our T2108, well, T2108 certainly broke things down here pretty hard. Um, breaking that trend. This also lends itself to a relief rally, but you'll want to keep in mind 20% um, of the stocks holding above their 40 day is not exactly a bullish case other than uh, an oversold condition. And we still have that possibility if we get more bank contagion that we could sink this little bit further down here to test the lows that we saw last year. So keep a close eye on that. that. Our T2107, interestingly enough, nowhere near as bearish as T2108. Small caps holding up quite a bit better. And as you can see, we got a pretty hard selling the last couple of days here in T2107. And we're pushing down into some price support here in that chart. So again, a bit of an oversold situation here. We might get a relief rally as long as this contagion doesn't spread. So watch carefully here. This might also give us that little hint of upside opportunity. If we take a look at our T2101, well, obviously T2101 reversed hard, showing us that momentum of selling that came in the last couple of days as we learned about these banking failures and issues and fractures starting to show up in our financial system. So watch that carefully here. Um, we've got a downtrend again. This might give us that little bit of hope of a relief rally that we can turn this, move that momentum the other direction. But if we continue to hear about more fractures or problems in our financial system, um, don't be too surprised if that spikes. What I'm really saying here is we should be prepared for just about anything in this market. We should expect the volatility of the of the next several days to be huge. And one of the reasons we're going to be so on edge is we've got a huge week of economic data that can move us a lot. Remember, just a few days ago, all we could worry about or all we were worried about is the Fed raising rates. Now we've got a situation where our financial system is showing weakness and maybe we've flipped that, but oh my goodness, look at this. We've got a, a pretty light day today, but this is gonna be interesting. We're gonna have a CPI number here on uh, Tuesday. If that number continues to come in um, hotter than expected, I don't know what that means as we see banks fail. How do we deal with this? Um, a lot of uncertainty in the market. We're going to have PPI on uh, Wednesday with retail sales, Empire State Manufacturing, Business Inventories, Housing Market Index, Petroleum Status, um, and then later on in the day, that Treasury International uh, number. We're going to have mortgage applications up here. Um, clearly, Wednesday is going to be a big market moving or potential market moving day with all that economic data. We're going to hit Thursday with housing starts and permits. Jobless claims the Philly Fed manufacturing number, import export prices, and we're going to have the EIA petroleum status in here. So obviously quite a few things going on here in the market that could um, raise lots of uncertainty and big price whipsaws in the market. And then Friday, industrial production, consumer sentiment, um, those are also relatively weighty 
um, uh, economic uh, numbers that uh, could keep the market on edge. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar. The good news is, is our earnings calendar is really starting to diminish here and um, a lot less. But for those folks who really are were relying on the on kind of the hype and the the energy surrounding earnings, well, that's starting to diminish. As far as notables today, there really isn't much of anything, honestly, that's notable. I did come up with a couple to put on the list. Uh, a GTLB might be somewhat notable here today um, on its earnings report, so keep an eye on that. And KOD. Um, but we're going to see an awful lot of uh, a big reduction in the numbers of earnings and the uh, market moving names. Um, the majority of those are certainly behind us and we're going to be entering the um, stock buyback uh, blackout period here soon for second quarter earnings. So kind of keep in mind we, we're kind of we're going to hit that quiet period here on the earning side of things and we'll probably spend an awful lot of our time being focused on the economic details and um, well we know where the stresses that the market ex is experiencing now with that uh, with all this uncertainty potential recession higher inflation fed raising rates or not um, quantitative easing or maybe quantitative tightening continuing bond yields continuing to flip-flop around there's a lot here on our plate to deal with let's take a look um, at some stocks that could be setting up but please keep in mind guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security as a matter of fact you're going to have to do your own due diligence and be very very careful in this market because anything and I mean anything could be possible with big point moves, uh, face ripping whipsaws, um, just be prepared for just about anything. Looking at some of these charts, as you can see our financials, you know, I would like to say that this would be a great time to be picking up some of our financial um, uh, banks here because of the big oversold condition in the market. I think you're going to have to have some pretty good resolve and be willing to hold through some incredible volatility uh, to do that, but watch that closely. You can look at maybe BAC um, holding, um, well, after breaking support, um, there's a lot of congestion in this chart back in here. You might be able to hold that, um, but just get ready for lots of volatility in here. Um, I think you might want to be taking a look at bonds. Um, we had a big surge here in um, uh, Treasury bonds, TLT. Looks like we've got quite a little volatility coming into that this morning as well as that's whipping around. Watch that closely. I think we're seeing maybe a rush to safety with the uncertainty that we're seeing out there in banks. So watch that closely um, as that pops up. I think keeping an eye on gold could be an interesting thing here because gold surging in a huge way. Everyone's looking for where can I get some safety here in um, this craziness and gold surging big time here this morning right now gold is up $26 an ounce here this morning after surging big on Friday so watch that closely silver um, is also moving up but not not as rapidly and not as strongly still got to break this downtrend here but I do think it's worth keeping an eye on as that uncertainty um, um, kind of grips the market here. So we'll want to watch those closely. A lot of volatility in here. Um, stocks that were really trying to hold in and look pretty good, um, holding those supports that I've been talking about, Thursday and Friday's price action, pushing those down. So if we get a big emotional relief rally back to the upside, we could certainly see those areas recover pretty quickly. But as you guys know, when I break price supports, when a stock breaks price support, um, creating lower uh, lows on a chart, I need to see that recover 
proof to hold and then I'm back on the bullish side of that. But we've got a lot of these that really are struggling here now um, with those potential breaks. So be kind of careful out there. As you guys know, I've been looking at AMD. Now, I think AMD's pullback, this uh, pullback in here is actually bullish. Um, we broke that downtrend. We're resting and pulling back into that trend. I would look for that next opportunity to the upside in AMD, particularly if we're going to go into a quantitative easing cycle here and the Fed just lets inflation run. I, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to get out of this. Um, it's, a, it's a big mess. So um, just watch some of these closely and expect some big moves. Hey, I want to thank everyone for listening this morning. I truly, truly appreciate it. Make sure you click those thumbs up buttons. Leave a brief comment. Make sure you click that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. We'd love to have you aboard. Um, Y'all take care. Be very, very safe. Thank you so much for everyone um, who watches the videos and continues to support the channel. I do truly appreciate it. Take care. Be safe out there. Look for lots of volatility this morning. A um, lot of things shaking around here. Um, be, protect your capital. Protect your capital. We'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Wishing you all the best.